Hello everyone, this is Super Comic Girl. I'm back with another video. So I do videos several times a week, sometimes a couple times a day. And in today's video, I am going to do a review of Batman and Bill, which I saw on Hulu. And um, because I'm into documentaries, so this was a documentary, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna look at it because it has Batman in it. So I'm gonna look at it and see what exactly this is all about and I am going to say this I thought the documentary was really well done and what I mean by that is that the author who wrote the book um forgot the name of it he uh he really like did the research and found the heirs and all this stuff and it is absolutely astonishing all of this time and effort that he went into finding the heir you know finding you know uh bill finger's granddaughter and all this type of stuff and um, it's just it's amazing so we we learned a lot about how underhanded dc comics is <laughs> because, um, yeah, <laughs> that just freaking pissed me off. So, for a very, very long time, I assumed myself that Bob Kane had been the sole creator of Batman. And I was fine with that. I was like, wow, you know? Um, and... The documentary really helped to um, open my eyes on how the comic book industry really, in fact, works. Nowadays, if somebody writes something that's part of a comic book, generally 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10, uh, their name will be included in the byline. So you know, like, who wrote it and who inked it and all that type of stuff. So I don't really think there's ghostwriters anymore. Everyone knows what you do. Um... So, I mean, to know that lots of people over the years was responsible for writing Batman's adventures, just, I mean, it's very, it was a very different time period. And I am not going to use this as an excuse to what Bob Kane did, because that was fucked up. So, Bill Finger was the one that created, uh, the you know, changed the costume, Craig Gotham City created, you know, the origin story of Batman, all this stuff. And what ended up happening was Bob Kane, whose father happened to be an attorney, went with him to ensure that his name would only be the only one on the byline. Bob Kane made millions of dollars off of Batman. And what angered me was that the actual person who created you know, created Gotham City and created the villains and the tools that Batman uses and even Alfred. I mean, literally. And, you know, it's, it's really, it was really saddening. I mean, I cried on some parts of the documentary because it really hit me in the feels because here was a man who had established Batman who did all this stuff, did all this work and Bob Kane was living in a mansion. He got to, he got to be buried in a nice cemetery with the lie on his tombstone um, or grave marker or whatever you call it. And it's just, it's it's sad. It really is. And even when they were faced with the question by a fan, they're like, oh yeah, we're on good speaking terms with the Finger family. Because this is the thing about it, about the Finger family. So, uh, Frederick Finger, or Fred, was uh, his, um, his ex-wife said that we all knew he was bisexual, but we never talked about it. It wasn't something we talked about. Um, and, you know, he gave her a beautiful baby girl, and, you know, I know that she doesn't, she, you know, she's so, you know, she really, really, like, 
just, I mean, she loved the guy. And, I mean, it didn't matter that he was bisexual. I mean, he, I mean she loved him. But this <laughs> is really weird. Uh, so, we can all pretty much imagine uh, what happened when DC Comics found out that Fred or Frederick Finger had passed away. They were like, oh yeah, you know, he's gay, and there's no way in the world that he's got an heir, because gays don't have children. At least, I think that was their belief back in, uh, you know, back several decades ago. Gay people don't have children. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, they all find out that Frederick did, in fact, give his wife a child. And I was laughing my ass off when they all found out. Yeah, you know, yeah. He married a woman. He got her pregnant and she gave birth to his daughter, also known as his heir. And then, to cap it all off, his heir had a son. I was laughing my ass off. Because it was the assumption that he never got married because he happened to be gay. And that is not what happened. He was bisexual. He was attracted to both men and women. And he married a woman and he gave her a beautiful baby girl. That he loved this girl more than anything in the world. And that hit me, you know, in the feels. I mean, to... I mean, to be, uh, you know, to be his daughter and to be told that daddy is sick and daddy is definitely not going to survive it must have been really, really heartbreaking for her. And I was, once again, caught in the feels. Um, <coughs> but it made me angry that, you know, Bob Finger, who was so instrumental in all of this, died penniless with a bunch of eviction notices on his door. And it was his friend that found the body. He was like, God. I still get the feels. <laughs> um, and what Fred did for his, his father. I mean, I thought that was so moving. I mean, he paid for the exhuming of his father's body. He, pay, he paid for the cremation. And it was just a beautiful thing. He loved his father so much and he wanted he thought it was unfair that his father was not recognized but he couldn't fight DC Comics um same thing with the creators of Superman they couldn't fight him finally finally they put their freaking name on a Superman movie I think it was and that was how people found out that these two Jewish boys created Superman. But it's, it's it's amazing about now with like all the stuff that he did for the Finger family and the fact is that they finally got re their you know their grand you know her, her grandfather finally got recognized. And wherever Fred's at, I'm pretty sure that he's very, very happy about it. I mean, she won the battle that he had lost. And I, I'm, I'm definitely sure that he's very happy that, you know, he gave his wife this girl that fought. I mean, it wasn't an easy thing for her. I mean, she had inherited, you know, so much shame, like, not with her father being, you know, gay or bisexual but the fact is that her grandfather never got the recognition for helping for creating Batman um, and to finally get it and what really really got me so pissed off with DC Comics is once they found out oh lo and behold the guy you thought was gay got married and had a girl and she's knocking on the front door demanding recognition because you fucked over her father. Yeah. And they were not expecting Bill's granddaughter to pop up out of the woodwork. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm Bill Finger's granddaughter. Oh, didn't she realize that my 
father got married to a woman and had me? <laughs> just <coughs> You can just imagine just like them just in their offices going, women, uh, how is this even possible? How in the world did Frederick have a daughter? Uh, it's called having sex. It just, that's how it happens. You don't have sex, you have a child. And what really hurt, I felt really sad about for poor Athena was in the documentary when she talked about being a little girl and writing about her family and writing that her grandfather helped to create Batman and the teacher looking at her like she's telling a tale out of school because the teacher was like, no, Bob Kane created Batman. No, Bob Kane was a big fat liar. I mean, the guy, the guy had this dumbest drawing for Batman ever and people saw right through his supposed evidence like, no, you did that after the fact, not before the fact. And, you know, it was like, you know, DC had to, had to do this, you know, this, uh, continue with the lie. And it was like, they gave her a check, and they gave her a thank you letter for what her grandfather did, which is also known as hush money, <laughs> in the legal world. Um, and then sent her a freaking email telling her that she, that requesting that she relinquish her rights to Batman because she apparently inherited the copyright. And she didn't do it. And, you know, you just imagine all those Hollywood actors that were around her and they were meeting her and none of them, I do not believe for a second that any of them knew what DC was going to do to Bill Finger's, or attempt to do to Bill Finger's granddaughter, which made me, just made me like my steam come out of my ears. And finally, finally it's like, yeah, uh, by the way, I'm an attorney representing Athena Finger, and uh, guess what? And then they did some legal maneuvering that DC wasn't expecting, and finally, lo and behold, they had to admit that Bob K was a big fat liar, and now they get a cut of everything. They get a cut of merchandising, they get a cut of the comics, they get a cut of the movie, uh, uh, the box office uh, sales, DVD sales, you know, streaming sales. <coughs> you know, you get HBO Max, a little bit of your money goes to the Finger family. I want to tell you something. That little boy is not going to have any kind of financial problems going through college. Yeah. But the thing was, it was such a battle. First it started with Bill, then it continued with his son, and then it continued with a, grand, with a daughter that, top of the morning, um, you know, and it was like, you know, it was like, and they was they used terms like lady of the night, and it's an old, like, 1950s, 1960s kind of word, like, lady of the night, you know, aka the mistress ends up becoming the wife, and, um, you know, and, uh, uh, I mean, she gave him a son named Frederick, who was bisexual, and he married, and he fathered a child. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was so funny. And I know people, people are going to read this, goes, you're used to bisexual a lot. Well, that's what Frederick was. He was bisexual, though, though, uh, though they labeled him as being gay. Um, I don't know what the problem with bisexual, why people have problems with bisexuals. I don't know. I, you know. Um, but it was, you know, it, it was, um, it must have been hell for them, for the Finger family, to watch, to watch Bob Kane 
making all of this money and just walking around like he owned the universe. It, it must have just angered these people so much. Just imagine the steam just every time Bob Kane's name was mentioned, the steam just came right out of her ears. Because you cannot tell me that she wasn't pissed off every time that Bob Kane's name was mentioned. Like like when Batman got mad when Joker was mentioned, he broke the broke the disc. Um so I mean you go and buy a you go and buy um a uh, a comic book like Batman Fortress and you open it up and you look at who created it. It said created by Bob Kane with Bill Finger. And to see that on the byline after I watched the documentary was absolutely just so nice to see that yes yes, finally it's being recognized. Um but it's just it's just like, you know, they had this whole little animated scene where, you know, Athena's uh, attorney comes in and she does her little legal mumbo-jumbo stuff that they do. And DC relents, relents big time and basically says that from now on, every single show, every single movie, every single comic is going to be is going to um, do this. And just thinking about that and thinking about Bob Kane rolling over his grave. <laughs> Ooh, then <revenge> just <is> sweet. <laughs> Especially when it comes with a big fat paycheck. But, you know, uh, what was interesting about the whole thing was. They were talking about how DC could not come clean about Bob F about Bill Finger um, helping to create uh, Bat you know Batman and all the characters and the and created the city and everything and how um, how it would have opened up a like a gateway of you know of legal wrangling and judges and lawsuits after lawsuits after lawsuits and you know I kind of say to myself wow it's nice to have a sister who's an attorney <laughs> it's like <laughs> wow nice um you know and it's I think it's cool to have a sister who's an attorney I think it's awesome um but yeah I mean it was just so like so well done the documentary hit me in the fields, found out that Frederick had actually done this for his father. And I thought that was so sweet that he did this for his dad. You know, it was like, you know, he couldn't do anything for the guy when he was alive. And now it's like, I can do something for him, you know. And, I mean, I think that's the same thing with, um... Athena and you know her half sister and their friend who was a, who is a copyright expert a copyright attorney and all she does is goes into courtrooms and she argues about copyright and everything and you know she broke down what the copyright act actually entails for people that didn't know what the copyright act entailed uh, because people don't know this stuff. People don't know about copyrights and, and why companies will go after people for copyright infringement and all this stuff. And literally, when you have basic explains, basically if one or more people, basically in layman's terms, helps create something, then, you know, they are owner co-owners of the item. And the fact is that Bill never gave up his copyright. I mean, you know, he never gave it up. I mean, you know, the 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 creators of Superman, they gave it up because they wanted to get published. And that was what DC wanted. DC, or what it was called before DC, that's exactly what they wanted. 
Um, so yeah, so the Finger family, they get money from, as I said, from the movies, from the TV shows, from the comics, from the action figures, from the play sets, from the Lego movies, from the, the wall art, the decal, the, you know, the, the mouse pads, the, the clothing, the shoes, not the, not the shoes, the, the socks, the underwear, the bikinis, I mean, anything that's got Batman on it, the Finger family gets a slice of the pro, of, of the profits. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, um, but, you know, a lot of people, like, the, the documentary's a couple years old, and the reason I'm doing this review of it is, uh, and airing out my grievances against Bob Kane, um, is, you know, I didn't know the documentary existed, and, I mean, to know that somebody took their time and effort, energy, and money to do a documentary, to find these heirs, to be shocked there was heirs, um, was just amazing. And he, 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 he showed that he had such a good heart and he backed away when it called for it. Um, and he really made his, he really made his, kids proud of him. I mean, I mean, his kids look up to him like you fought for someone that you didn't even know to have what was rightfully theirs. And, um, I think so. Like I said, a lot of crying, a lot of hit me in the feels. It was a great documentary. Um, so yeah, so if you have Hulu, definitely check out Batman and Bill. Um, because I think that, I personally think that it's a great um, documentary and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of weird when you watch these documentaries about, you know, these descendants trying to fight for what is theirs, what's legally theirs. Um, and just, just the, the crap that Athena went through with Warner Brothers was... Oh my lord! But I wrote. But you know, it's, um, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's stupid. It really is stupid, and you know. But thankfully, everything worked out for the best, and now the Finger family is getting what is rightfully theirs, over and over again. I'm kind of wondering how big are those checks they get. It's like, yes, uh, we sold uh, $11 million worth of merchandise. Here's a check for $500,000 or something like that. But uh, I'm just wondering. So, uh, yeah. Definitely definitely buy the figures because, you know, I, I, I'm really thinking about doing that. You know. Yeah, I mean, I love Batman. I really do. But um, I definitely give the uh, documentary five stars. It is such a good uh, documentary. And it also really exposes how how underhanded a lot of these companies are. <coughs> you know, greed is greed. And they don't give a shit who they hurt. Um, and how far they can perpetrate a lie. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I am going to let you guys go. Hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, nerds, read on. Bye.